Good morning. Good morning. Hey, just wanted to real quick say welcome, welcome church online. You know, this isn't the way that I plan to start out the new year, um, but welcome. Welcome everyone to church online today. If nothing else, everyone gets to experience the new and improved church online here at FBC Lantana. Uh, you can still go the old way to YouTube. This just makes it that much easier. It's just a click away. Even if you go to the website, fbclantana.com, there's a button. All you got to do is click on it, and you're live. You're right in. You don't have to go through all the trouble we used to have to go through. So it's a nice way to show it to everyone to start off the new year, although it isn't the way we really wanted to start it. You know, but really it kind of summarizes the way these past few years have gone here, here in the U.S. with with the whole COVID and shutdowns and lockdowns, you know, and we really haven't had to go through that in like the last year, you know, but it's a reminder that it's still there. And it's a reminder that, you know, sometimes we put our guards down and instead of putting our guards down, we need to remain diligent in what we're doing, whether it's wearing masks, social distancing, whatever it is, um, we still need to do our part, and unfortunately, sometimes we get a little bit lax. So welcome this morning. I'm glad you're here. You know, we're looking this morning at a, I had a real simple sermon, you know, kind of let's take a chance and, you know, it's a one-off new sermon series starts next week, and it was kind of like, let's take some time and look back so that we can move forward. And, you know, they always say hindsight's 20-20. Have you ever noticed when you look back? When, when you look back in the past, things, it always seems so much clearer and, and, and you, you may not have saw it while you were going through it, but then you look back, oh my God, I, now you see clearly. And hopefully that's what we'll see today is as we take some time and we look back over this past year to year and a half, that we're going to see some clarity to help us to move forward and to understand things that we do as we continue to move forward here within the church. You know, and, and I wanted to just ask you real quick, if you could give 2021 a review, what would it be? Think about it. Would you give 2021 a five-star review or would you give it a one-star review? And what I want you to do is go ahead and put it in the comments. Put it in the comments now. You five stars, one star, two and a half stars, whatever it is. Let us know in the comments your review on 2021 on how it went for you during the course of the year. You know, was it a good year? Was it a bad year? But go ahead and leave us a comment and let us know. And, and you know, we can all, we all know that we've had some ups and some downs during the course of the year. You know, some great things have happened during the year. There's been some funny things happen, some not so good things that have happened. Um, there's ugly stuff that's happened during the year. You know, we run the gamut of all of it. And actually, if you Google year in review, Google actually puts out a video or to show the year in review. And, and I was watching it this, you know, the, this week, and you know, I was totally amazed at the number of people going through anxiety and depression and, and that big question, when will COVID end? You know, will this ever end? You know, it just seems like it's been here forever. And, you know, but so these are things and, you know, a lot of people worrying about all different things and what's to come. And, and I think as a church family and as individuals, we can learn from this as we look back and, and see some of the things that we did this year and some of the things that happened that maybe that we forgot about. So, but with that being said, we're going to take some time and I want to look at God's word and see what the Bible says about remembering you know, as we go back and why we should remember things. And then hopefully what we'll see is that we have been changed in the past year by God's grace in both challenging and joyful ways. Remembering these things will empower us to move into the future. So if you have your Bible with you, um, you can go ahead and open it up to Deuteronomy 11. I will tell you, if you don't have your Bible, one thing you'll notice with the church online is if you look down, there is a little button that says Bible. You can actually click on that, and the Bible will come up on the side, and you can read along right with us while watching the video. So this morning, I'm going to be reading from the English Standard Version. I just like the way it reads uh, in this scripture. So with that being said, let's go ahead and dig into God's Word. 
It says, you shall therefore love the Lord your God and keep his charge, his statutes, his rules, and his commandments always. And consider today, since I am not speaking to your children who have not known or seen it. Consider the discipline of the Lord your God, his greatness, his mighty hand, and his outstretched arms, his signs and his deeds that he did in Egypt to Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, and to all his land and what he did to the army of Egypt, to their horses and to their chariots, how he made the water of the Red Sea flow over them as they pursued after you, and how the Lord had destroyed them to this day, and what he did to you in the wilderness until you came to this place, and what he did to Dathan and Abiram, the son of Eliab, the son of Reuben, how the earth opened its mouth and swallowed them up, and their households, their tents, and every living thing that followed them in the midst of all Israel. For your eyes have seen all the great work of the Lord that he did. And then verse 18 through 20 say this, you shall therefore lay up these words of mine in your heart and in your soul, and you shall bind them as a sign on your hand, and they shall be as the frontlets between your eyes. You shall teach them to your children, talking of them when they are sitting in your house and when you are walking by the way, and when you lie down and when you rise, you shall write them on the doorpost of your house and on your gates. Amen. Heavenly Father, as we open up your word today and we dig in, Lord, open up our eyes that we may see what it is you want us to see. Open our hearts that we may receive your word and open our ears that we may hear your voice. And Lord, may your word be glorified through it all. And we make this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. So one of the things we see here is that God has given his people the joyful task of actively remembering what he has done for and through us. And it's a chance to celebrate, give thanks, and to teach our children. Now, one of the words you're going to notice got, was said a lot is the word consider. Uh, it started out even in verse 2, but the word consider is actually used 43 different times um, and often as a command for God's people to reflect upon, teach, or to remember, and to know what God has done. And it actually trans, uh, translates the word yada. And, and like I said, it is said 43 different times in the book of Deuteronomy as a way for the, the Israelites to remember and to tell others. And I think we really need to look at that ourselves because God's God's instructions demonstrate that this is a command to be taken seriously. It was for the Israelites to take it serious and to tell and encourage and remind people what God has done in their past. And I think we need to do the same thing. We need to take that time and remember what God has done for us and that we tell it to others, tell it to our children, tell it to our neighbors. You know, God commanded the Israelites to do this, and we should do the same as Christ followers. We should look at who we can tell of the marvelous things that God has done in our lives. And I think sometimes we just seem to forget about it because we just kind of go through the motions where we've kind of, well, we've told this person or this person, but we got to keep going. We've got 43 times in the book of Deuteronomy, the word is used. That means something. And it means we should continue to do the same thing. Continue to teach others what God has done. God takes it serious, so we should take it serious also. You know, there's a place of knowledge that, that's not only in our heart and our soul, but also within our hands and everything that we do that we need to pass on to the next generations as we move forward. You see here, they're to teach their children by talking to these things when they sit at home, when they get up, even when they go out for a walk. And we should do these same things. You know, in other words, God wants us to consider the things that he has done and, and the things that he has taught us, and we should do it all the time. It's not just a one-off thing. We should do this all the time, talking about what God has done. And I find it interesting, in 1 Samuel 7, 12, it actually says this, Then Samuel took a stone and set it up between Mizpah and Shen and called its name Ebenezer. For he said, till now the Lord has helped us. 
You see, Samuel set up an altar to the Lord. You know, and in 1 Samuel, you see, see, even Samuel taking his commandments serious. He's being serious about it. And when God heard the people's cries for deliverance, Samuel actually erects a stone of remembrance for them and says, till now has the Lord has helped us. The Lord has helped us. So understand, building that altar is a symbol. It's a symbol of worship, and it was acted out, and it's a powerful symbol and reminder. And even when you look to the Old Testament, there's over 30 different times it talks about an altar being built. And every time you think of an altar being built, it's because God did something. You know, it's to praise God, or we're going to build this altar so people remember and that's what we should be building in our own lives is, is these altars for people to remember so that we can point back and say, look, see how God showed up? See what God did in my life? And you're going to be able to point that to other people. Here inside this church, there are altars and pillars that have been built along the way since the beginning of this church that we are able to look back on and see what God has done inside this church. And it's something that I think we need to celebrate and continue to look at because it does mean something to God. And, and, you know, we need to understand that in in this, some versions um, in the hymn, come thou font of every blessing, actually include this verse. You know, here I raise mine Ebenezer, hither by the help I'm come, and hope by the good pleasure, safety, to arrive at home. Seeing these lines expressed so well, the purpose of tangible signs were remembering God's work. And that's exactly what we should do. We should remember God's work, you know, in looking behind at what God's done, and we can find courage and hope for what God's going to do in the future. And I think God's got big plans for us here at this church. I think he's got big plans for this community. And You know, with that being said, I got a question for you this morning. As a church family, how can we make a visible, audible telling of God's work in our community? How can we make a visible or audible telling of God's work in our community? Think about what can we use to show our community that God's still moving? What can we do to show the community God's still moving? And even more, what can you do to show God is still alive and that he's not dead? What can you in your own life show for that? You know, God is and will always be on the move. And you think about, you know, First Baptist Church of Lantana in 2021, you know, this year we've cried with one another, we've loved on one another, we've had fellowship uh, with one another, we've had fellowship online, we've had fellowship inside the room together. We've had a year of spiritual growth within the church. You know, and I've seen this little congregation grow with even more love and love for each other. And it is, we are a loving church. We we love on people and and I want to see that continue and grow. And and God knows exactly what we need and when we need it. And just give you a couple things over the past year. We've had three baptisms this last year. We had one salvation. And just o- in just over a year, we've added 13 new members to the church. So, so we've added quite a bit. We've added over 130 followers on Facebook. Now, a lot of you may not understand that, but under- you know, 130 more people following the church on Facebook is 130 more people than what we had a year ago who get to see our posts, who get to see the sermons, who start to interact with the church. And it is a lost soul. On Google alone, over this past year, we've had over 8,000 people see our, see our name of our church on Google. Over 8,000. It's cost us to have over, I think it's like 100 and something phone calls come into the office. People have asked for directions. People looking for the food pantry, brown box ministry. And all of these are people who are looking for the church. They're looking for the church for one reason or the other. It may not to be in here on a Sunday, but even if it's for us to give them a brown box of food, even if it's for us to provide them with some clothes, that's doing what God calls us to do. 
And, and as I've said in previous sermons, you know, God's going to provide the seed. It's our job to sow that seed and then allow him to multiply it. And, and we have seen multiplication because October of last year, we averaged 33 people uh, each week in service. Over the month of December, we averaged over 53 people in the house. So we're seeing multiplication by God. So we're seeing what God is doing, and I know he's still got bigger things planned for us. You know, we, we've made changes around the campus. We've created more outreach opportunities, and I think it's just going to be better and better as the year goes on. And, and with that, I want you to go ahead, just watch this short video on some things we've accomplished over this year. The need is so strong, I want to welcome in Ken Baker. He is with First Baptist Church in Lantana. The food that was collected here today, right away, it's already going to families in need. Right away, it's at back at the church right now. It's being sorted, being repacked, and next Saturday from 9 a.m. to noon, we're going to be giving that food right back out. And, and you know, Jay, like you said, it's, it's that demand. That demand is so high compared to the supply that's coming in. So it's well needed and such a blessing to be able to get this, to be able to give back. Amazing work. Ken Baker with First Baptist Church in Lantana. Ken, thank you so much.
Now, some of you have probably never seen the sanctuary the way it looked last Christmas compared to the way it looks today. Um, and, and some of you really don't know the history of the church. So I'll give you a real short history lesson. In 1961, Northside Baptist Church in Lake Worth sent a group of people to start a chapel here in Lantana. Um, and we still actually have one of those people here with us today, Ms. Bessie Parker, who is actually listed as the 22nd member of First Baptist Church of Lantana. So Lantana Baptist Chapel initially met at Lithgow Plumbing uh, out on Dixie Highway. They held Sunday school uh, in the store or outside on the sidewalk or even inside cars. They grew. They eventually moved to the Publix uh, Shopping Plaza, to the shopping center over there in a the storefront. And in March 1963, they were constituted from Lantana Baptist Chapel to First Baptist Church of Lantana, and they had 349 members at the time. Praise God for that. So a little history. And since then, just to give you some idea, since then we have had 2,426 members registered here at First Baptist Church of Lantana. Now that's a lot of people compared to what we currently have. And, and as we've been looking back, and Micah and I looking back at the history, um, just some other things, you know, used to have a softball team, used to beat the police department all the time playing softball, had bowling leagues, had all these different things. At one point, we were looking back 400 people in the sanctuary at a time. Now, I'm trying to picture 400 people in here, and I'm just picturing the rows are packed. God's not done. God's not done with us, and I still foresee this coming in the future. I could see us being a packed house again, even having to go to multiple services because I know God's not done with us. This church has a, had a longstanding reputation here in Lantana. And as we go into 2022, I still think God has big plans. You know, Some of the things we, we have planned that we're looking to do in 2022 is... <coughs> 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 Some of the things that we have planned for 2022, uh, we've got a second projector, so we want to go ahead and put a second screen up on this side, because we know it's kind of hard when people are on this side of the room to see the screen over here, so it's going to cause us to do a little transition up here on the stage so we can get a second screen. But again, it's something that's been gifted to us that will help everyone to be able to see that much more. Uh, like to begin doing a youth night sometime in, in the 2022. Look for more opportunities to be able to partner and opportunities to partner with others right here in the town of Lantana. You know, being able to reach out and help people in this neighborhood. You see, helping overseas is a great thing. It's a great thing to help and, and to support overseas missions. But we got people hurting right here. We got people hurting right here in the town of Lantana. We got people hurting in Hypoluxa. We got them hurting in Lake Worth. And, and I think we should focus on home first. I think we should be looking at what can we do to help our neighbor? Because our neighbor is right here. Our neighbor is not necessarily overseas. So I'd like to look at opportunities over the course of 2022 on how we can partner more here close to home so that people know we're here, you know, so that we can be a beacon in this community. Think about this. If we were to close our doors, if First Baptist Church of Lantana closed their doors today and was never going to be open again, would the town of Lantana, would there be a void, would it be missing if this church wasn't here? Think about that. Would the town of Lantana miss this church if it wasn't here? Now, now, I'm not, yes, we would miss it, the people who come to church. I'm not talking about us. Would the town of Lantana miss this church if it wasn't here? And I could honestly tell you, if, if you're like me, you're going to say no. Most people don't even know we're here. They thought we merged. They thought, you know, the building. Well, the parking lot's done. They know someone lives here now. So the question would be, what can we as a church do in 2022 to make Lantana know we're here? 
Make the people know that we're here and if we close the door, that they would miss us. And the way we do that is to reach out into the community. We've got to be in the community doing what we can inside here. Because if we do everything for overseas or we do it for, it's not going to matter if we're here or not. It's not going to affect change in that neighborhood right back there. It's not going to affect change over here in Lake Worth. We've got to affect change. And I want you to think about that. What can you as a member of this church do in 2022 to affect change in this community to make people want to know and know about this church? Because it's all of our jobs. This church, as I've always said, it's not about these four walls. It's about each one of us as an individual coming together, doing what God called us to do. That's what we're called to do. Because if we close the doors now, they wouldn't even realize we were gone. Wouldn't even realize it. And most of us would just go find another church. Make a change in 2022 that's going to affect the people in this neighborhood, affect the people in Lake Worth, affect the people in Hypoluxo, that if we weren't here, they would miss us. Be the change in this year. Be part of that change. See, God's got big things planned. You know, we still want to paint the church in 2022. We want to put out fences in the back in 2022. But you see, none of this happens without us getting people and without us affecting change. And I appreciate every one of you. I, I love every one of you very much. The, the, we are a loving, supportive church. And we certainly appreciate that. But we need to also be loving to our community and we need to love our neighbors. So I want to challenge you during this time, come up with some ideas on what we can do to affect change in these neighborhoods. So I want to go back to Deuteronomy 11, 18 through 20 again. And it says this, imprint these words of mine on your hearts and minds, bind them as a sign on your hands, and let them be a symbol on your foreheads. Teach them to your children. Talk about them when you sit in your house and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. Write them on the doorposts of your house on your city gates. We've got to imprint God's word. We, we've got to imprint God's word in our hearts. We've got to teach it to our children. We've got to actively remember the goodness of God actively remember what God has done for each one of us. Actively remember what God has done with this church in the past as we look back to see the future so that we can move forward and be the church that God called us to be, that we will go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, telling people about what Jesus did for us. God's given his people a joyful task of actively remembering what he has done for us and a chance to celebrate, give thanks, and teach it to our children. And like I said at the beginning, we have been changed in the past year by God's grace in both challenging and joyful ways, but remembering these things will empower us to move into the future. Are you ready for the future? Are you ready for 2022 to be a great year? It's up to you being obedient to what God calls. And you know, maybe you're joined us for church online and you're like, man, pastor, that's real good, but I'm not sure. I, 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 I don't know Jesus. I don't know what to do. I don't know God's word. How am I going to imprint it? How am I going to tell it to my children? Well, your first step is to accept Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. You know, and if you're trying to get it together and trying to get it right, it's never going to happen. You know, God's word says, for we all sin and we all fall short of the glory of God. But God loved us so much that he sent his son to die on a cross for us. And it says, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. That's where it starts. And then from there, as God starts to move you and change you, 
and you spend that more time with him digging in his word, you'll be able to tell people, hey, this is who I was. This is the day I met Jesus. And this, this is what he's done in my life. And that's what you're going to be able to teach and tell people. And every one of us have that story that we're able to tell. Problem is, some of us aren't telling. Some of us think we've arrived and that we're finished. God's not dead and God's not done with any one of us. We need to all continue to move forward in 2022. And let's make sure this town knows we're here. Let's do everything we can to affect change in this community. Affect change around us. Affect change in people's lives right here. It's been an amazing year. But man, God's got a plan. And maybe you're online watching and Pastor, that's all good, but but, but I've lost that passion. Dur during this final prayer time, I just encourage you, take time with God. Ask him to open up your eyes to see what he has for you. What his plan is for your life. What he wants you to do in the future. And then go do it. Be obedient to what he called you to do and go and do it. Don't get stuck on the past. The past is a great thing, but God still has a future. We can look to the past and wish we had 400 people. But unless we do something about it, we will never have it. So we've got to move in order to move forward. Looking to see, hey, these were glory days. We want them back. That's what we need to move forward to get there. Because going back won't work. So maybe you're sitting here and it's time for you to accept that it's time for us to move forward and even for everyone to move forward and affect change in 2022. Let's go to the Lord and pray. Heavenly Father, I raise up this congregation to you, Lord. Lord, I raise them to you that we will not only be your laborers in the harvest, as we've talked about all through 2021, that we will continue to be those laborers, Lord, but more importantly, Lord, that we will affect change this year. We will affect people's lives in a, in a radical way by being obedient to your call. Lord, that, that you will fill this house because people are seeking you and that the people here are seeking you with their whole hearts, that they're just bringing people with them, Lord that they're being a vessel used by you. And Lord, that your name will be glorified through it all and that we will see change in Lantana, Hypoluxo, Lake Worth, and beyond and that you will be glorified through it. And make this prayer in Jesus' name, amen.